When I say I'm here as a human being, I mean that literally. Our species evolved, has been around for maybe 100,000 years, maybe a little more. Uh, the reason we thrived and survived as a species, I would put it to two things. Number one, we are incredibly inventive. Incredibly inventive. All of us. Number two, we take care of each other. That's who we are. And in the last few hundred years of laws and rules and norms, we've tried to make the world a better place. But the truth of it is, at the deepest part of who we are, we take care of one another. And the rules and the laws are means to an end. The end is human welfare. It's not the size of the bank account of the CEOs. So, last I checked, uh, there was no Newton's fourth law of dynamics of business. There is, you know, Einstein had theories of general and special relativity. I don't remember an appendix that talked about the rate of profit. There is in the universe something called the Planck constant. I don't think the constant for greed is in those equations anywhere. These are not God-given rights to the pharma sector. Monopoly privilege from patents is bestowed by the people for a reason. And if that, is, that reason is not being met, it is perfectly reasonable to suspend those rules. So that's the world we face. We, I look at the TV, I look at you know, my homeland, I look at what's happening in Delhi, it is a horror. There are things happening all over the world that are a horror. And at the end of the day, it's because of this virus, right? It's because of what's been happening. And we, as a species, have to rise up to the challenge. So let me state something else that's obvious. Global governance is broken, period. It is not working. So in that sense, the pharma sector is doing their job. The pharma sector is making money for their shareholders. The question is, who sets the rules? And that's where we have to take action. Because really, it's the politicians and the political leadership of this and every other country, including India, that have to be reminded who they work for. That's right. The rules that are made, the rules that are set, the rules that are enforced, they have to be reminded why those rules are made and how they're going to be enforced. The challenge for us, and I don't pretend this is a small thing, but after 100,000 years coming out of Africa, we're on every continent, we're everywhere, and we're all interconnected. And there's just, it's a fiction that there's any border. Does the virus care about your passport? Absolutely not. Does the virus care who you know? Well, in New Delhi, I can tell you that's not working so well either. The reality is we're in a new century. This is a critical time for us as human beings. And this is the first of many challenges. Carbon dioxide doesn't care about your passport. Nuclear weapons don't care about your passport. We have to change global governance, and we have to do it now. 
then this seems like a good time to start. The pandemic is a good time for everyone to see what we face and what we have to do. So we have to hold our politicians accountable. The TRIPS waiver is fine, but the TRIPS waiver is just one first step. We need a global consortium of manufacturing. We need global coordination. We need a pooling, not just of pens. We need a pooling of resources. And what we really need is global leadership. And where is it? It's not going to come from anywhere unless we demand it. And so for all of us, it's now or never. Yeah.